Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening, everyone. First tonight, rescue teams have launched a land and air search for a 77-year-old man missing east of Hobart. Let's go straight to Michelle Wisby with this evolving situation. Michelle, what do we know about the rescue mission tonight? Kim, authorities have mounted a search for missing Primrose Sands man Bob Lucas. Police are searching around the Primrose Sands and the Carlton Bluff areas using cars and motorbikes. A rescue helicopter has also taken to the skies, flying in low laps over the area as they work through the coastal region. The 77-year-old man was last seen just before midday on Tuesday on Tamarick's Road. He was wearing a light bone-coloured hooded jacket. Police have described him as around 172 centimetres tall with a slim build and he was believed to be travelling on foot. As the search continues, it is set to be a very cold night ahead. The Bureau of Meteorology says the actual temperature will dip to around 2 degrees, but it will feel like minus 3 in the early hours of this morning. Kim authorities are now urging anyone who has seen Bob or has information about his location to contact police. Well, the Bell Bay aluminium smelter is back in the spotlight after a decision by owner Rio Tinto to close a smelter in New Zealand. The company is still in the midst of negotiations with Hydro Tasmania for a new power deal as the sector grapples with an oversupply. New Zealand's TY Point smelter has been in business since 1971, but next year the pots will go cold when Rio Tinto shuts the site following a failed attempt to secure cheaper power. It's had a long association with Tasmania. It uh, certainly struck a chord with me. I, I did actually work at the smelter uh, over 20 years ago, so it's quite raw and I, I can, I'm feeling for the people now um, in terms of what they're going through. Eyes are now on the company's Bell Bay smelter, which is also in the midst of negotiating a power contract with Hydro Tasmania. Premier Peter Gutwin met with the company last month. We we're engaged and uh, uh, actively negotiating with them at the moment. The smelter is the oldest in the Southern Hemisphere and consumes roughly 25% of the state's energy. Around 400 people are employed at the site. Hydro Tasmania says it's not aware of the New Zealand decision affecting Bell Bay and that it has a long-term contract in place with the company. Rio is keeping quiet but has previously warned its Australian smelters are on thin ice. In recent months the COVID um, has shut down a lot of manufacturing throughout Asia and that's definitely created an oversupply of aluminium but that's a short-term issue. Long term, the challenges remain in power prices and increased competition from China. It's obviously a difficult time um, for uh, any large industrial. Uh, and we'll do what we can to ensure that we can keep those jobs here. Ray Mostogel says affordable energy will also be key to attracting new industries like hydrogen. Meanwhile, the wait continues to see what will happen at the neighbouring Temco smelter following a review by South 32. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's state of emergency has been extended by a month as Victoria's coronavirus outbreak continues to worsen. The status gives local authorities extra powers to respond and our airports are also rolling out precautions to keep our state free of COVID-19. An airport makeover of a different kind. It's empty in Launceston now, but staff here have been preparing to soon reopen the terminal to more travellers. We've installed about 450 signs throughout the airport, in addition to that sanitisation stations to keep people safe. Strict new hygiene measures in place. Promising every tray sanitised, every queue socially distanced. We are continuing on with the measures that uh, have been implemented and we are confident that these measures will be safe. When you think of airports, you think about the visitor economy, tourists coming into the state, but it's also really crucial for business to business travel and also for what's in the belly of those planes, the imports and exports coming into the state. Overnight authorities extending Tasmania's state of emergency in place for an extra month until August 31, aiming to prevent another outbreak. We have the risk of one that is present as a result of what's occurring in Victoria and it's important that we maintain our state of emergency to ensure that should we we need to react that we can react swiftly. Under that Act there are extraordinary powers uh, that gives me as the state controller to be able to enact 
to be able to uh, assist the community to get through this, um, the emergency that we're facing. From today, Victorians are banned from entering Tasmania without a permit. We will turn them back um, if we have to hold them in the uh, government facility, as in a hotel, and for the next plane, they'll be put back on that plane and they will most likely be charged that flight. The Premier preparing to explain which states other than Victoria will welcome back in. South Australia has um, uh, no evidence of community transmission, likewise the Northern Territory, uh, likewise Queensland, uh, but obviously New South Wales is having some challenges. A border update to be revealed tomorrow. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. New property data has revealed the impact coronavirus has had on our rental market. The latest Domain quarterly update found Hobart recorded the sharpest decline, rental decline of all capital cities in June. Rental asking prices dropped an average of $20 a week for houses and $35 a week for units. Despite this, vacancy rates remained the lowest in the nation. It is still the tightest rental market despite the disruption in rental prices and an increase in advertised uh, rental listings during the pandemic. Um, so it is still fairly competitive when you compare it to some of our, our other capital cities. During the same period, average rental prices in Launceston increased by $10 a week for houses and $20 for units. With a ring of the bell and a friendly smile, Launceston City Park train has chuffed into its 60th year of serving the community. Today, the train's tenure was extended for another five years. Now, a name change is on the cards. In 1960, the original City Park train was the puffing pulse of Launceston. Today... <laughs> The train, now known as Lonnie the Loco, is marking its 60th anniversary as a golden form of family fun. Well, every day is different and we sort of act as a little bit of a tourist ambassador. Quentin Partis took over the lucrative locomotive contract around 20 years ago. I had two little children at the time and I thought, well, it's free rides for life, isn't it? You know. <laughs> the train now covers an estimated 30,000 kilometres each year. Just around the park, in first gear. And it'll be steaming along for five more, with the council today extending its licence to chuff. A lot of people got memories and enjoy the time that they have here and it's so important. There's now talk of a public competition to potentially give Lonnie the Loco a new name. It's great fun, yeah, the kids love it and I enjoy it. It's real fun, actually. It makes a good day. Oh, and don't be alarmed by the lack of social distancing. The train actually has an exemption because it's classed as a mode of transport. Even after 60 years, the train remains a much-loved Launceston icon. And now it's had a new engine installed. She's set to run for many years to come. Thomas, the tank engine, 7 Tasmania News. The Tasmanian screen industry is set to take centre stage with a locally produced TV show launching globally next month. The filming of season three of Aussie Lobster Men was disrupted by the pandemic, but is being touted as the best and most realistic yet. He's all smiles today showing off his wares, but it's been a tough few months for Squizzy. The star of Aussie Lobster Men says he's seen a lot during his years at sea, but the coronavirus pandemic left him like a fish out of water. What are you going to expect from the season? A lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most stressful time of my life, running the family business. Um, our industry got turned upside down overnight and we had to adapt pretty quick. The international market drying up virtually overnight, forced to adapt, selling his quota cheap to the Tasmanian public to get by. The last few months documented on film for season three. Just a stressful time and your whole mind the whole time was just in how are we going to get through this? So I forgot the camera guy was there. I just acted how I was acting and that's just the way I went about it and that's what makes it just so real. From real life documentary drama going global to a satirical spin on world events. Tasmanian companies Blue Rocket Productions and Blue Cow Theatre are also about to launch a show made during shutdown. Tasmanian World News, TWN, is set in a socially distanced TV studio with a twist. And the idea is really to present world news from a really small-minded Tasmanian perspective and present Tasmanian news as though it's of earth-shattering importance. Both shows are recipients of government funding, hoping to shine the spotlight on Tasmanians on big and small screens for years to come. We've provided $3.5 million uh, to the industry to uh, ensure that it can uh, tackle the challenges of uh, COVID-19 
uh, and of course continue as best possible. Ebony Applett, 7 Tasmania News. A 200 kilogram seal has been rescued after it was found with a large hook lodged in its muzzle. The injured Australian fur seal was first spotted off the Tasman Peninsula on Tuesday. Wildlife rangers were able to sedate the animal and remove the hook before it swam away in a good condition. The incident has sparked a warning from authorities for all fishers to dispose of their equipment responsibly. Launceston will boast a reinforced ruck lineup when it takes on Glenorchy in this weekend's TSL opener, while a Pies veteran is raring to go in a new role. KG5 has easily reached its capacity crowd of 500 people for this weekend's blockbuster. They'll see footballers in their freshest form for a mid-July season opener. We've got guys who've done more than 60 pre-season sessions now, so they're definitely ready to play. The Blues have won the past three, including the semi-final thrashing, which few saw coming. But fans can't miss the ruck recruits of Tim Auckland and Joe Gronewegen, who will complement Hamish Leadham. To have two more ruckmen added to the list just gives him a bit of support and uh, gives us some flexibility in front of goal um, to maybe be a bit taller in our forward line. The tall trio gives coach Mitch Thorpe some much needed options. We were undersized down back, particularly against the sides that had big key forwards like North Lonnie. Um, it's nice to have some flexibility within the lineup. In the Pies camp, Josh Arnold is being promoted from vice captain to co captain alongside Jaden Webb. He's been ba um, Batman's Robin for a long time um, and this year he gets to step up and, and be the captain. And even though he's a guy that's been around forever and a day, we feel like he can have a career year this year. And the North West Football League has confirmed it will play this season. Round one will be on the 18th of July. Tom Johnson, 7 Tasmania News. An exciting Tasmanian basketball prodigy has returned home after an impressive four-year stint in the US college system. Tanner Krebs has been fine-tuning his on-court skills in Hobart and is on the verge of securing a breakthrough NBL contract. Back at home and back at training, the Warrain Sports Centre, a place of daily refuge for Tanner Krebs. At the moment, you know, I've just been working out, uh, trying to get better and, you know, kind of get ready for that next step. The 24-year-old stepping foot on the home court after turning heads in St Mary's College in America. Chuck like at five, Krebs with a step back. That's good, that gets St Mary's on the board. The very spot A-list stars Matthew Della Vadova and Paddy Mills first burst onto the global scene. Krebs never looked out of place, one of the highest point scorers last season. Played really well. Um, we were really successful and, you know, I come out of it feeling like I achieved a lot. Almost two metres tall and with skills to match. Right hands it off to Krebs, he'll fire away again and rattle home another three. His promise had Europe calling and now a host of NBL clubs are circling. It's quite exciting and it's quite thrilling, to be honest. Um, it's almost like getting recruited to go to the US again. He would join only a handful of Tasmanians currently playing in the top flight league. The ultimate goal is to follow in the footsteps of his Samaris Aussie alumni and shoot for the NBA. That was my goal and you know, I'm excited to what's next. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. Good evening, a few light showers overnight and early, followed by a partly cloudy day today. Hobart 13 degrees, Launceston and Burnie 11, Devonport a top of 12. Minus 4, the low at Liawini, the high 15 at St Helens and Flinders Island. Friendly beaches and Strawn 14, King Island 13, Grove 12, Lowhead 11, Ooze and Liawini tops of 7. Low level cloud over the west and northern half of the state today, sunnier conditions over the south and southeast. Mid to low level cloud sits along the east coast of the mainland and southwest WA. Higher cloud over South Australia and New South Wales. Tomorrow, a high over the Tasman Sea extends a ridge over Tasmania. A cold front, trough, and complex low pressure zone creeps a bit closer. Another trough extends through Queensland. Now the wind's northerly tomorrow and only up to around 10 knots, reaching 15 knots over western waters. Light and variable winds over the inland lakes. We have a road weather alert for the central plateau, Midlands, Upper Doohan Valley and the southeast. Warning of frost and ice on susceptible roads. Hobart for Friday, partly cloudy and 12, 12 for Hewanville after a frosty start, 13 the high for Campania. Launceston tomorrow, 12 with morning fog, a partly cloudy day, a shower for Devonport and 13, possible shower for Georgetown, 13 the top as well. 13 and a shower for Burnie, Strawn 13, partly cloudy, a shower for Wynyard, all on 13. 
and 4. St Helens, partly cloudy and 14. Same for Swansea, Port Arthur, a tad cooler on 12. On Saturday, fine apart from a shower over Bass Strait, maybe extending to the north coast. Showers over the east, south east and Bass Strait Islands on Sunday, fine and partly cloudy elsewhere. And on Monday, morning frost patches and fine with the exception of the east coast and Flinders Island. Mostly sunny in Perth tomorrow, showers forecast for Adelaide and later in Melbourne, cloudy in Canberra and Brisbane and a few showers for Sydney on a top of 18. And current conditions, Hobart clear and 6 degrees, Launceston 7 and partly cloudy, partly cloudy also in Devonport. And that's the way it all shapes up at the moment, Kim. Thank you, Murph. Ship shape. Well, that's all your news for now. I'll be back later with some updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.